Mayor Allen, it is now 630 and when you have a quorum of members of council on camera, you may begin the meeting. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> Can I have a mover and seconder call the meeting to order, please? Councilor Cabral, Councilor Moore, uh, that the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Springwater, June 15, 2022, come to order at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Uh, meetings of Council are continue to be held electronically, and residents can watch the meeting live online by tuning into www.springwater.ca forward slash live, where they can listen to the meeting uh, during the meeting by phone by dialing 647-558-0588 and using the ID 811-8914-2780. This option is available during the meeting. For those who want to watch the live stream after the meeting is over, you can watch the video on the Township's YouTube channel, which is uh, a link for which is on the website, www.springwater.ca. Are there any disclosure pecuniary interests this evening, Council? Seeing none, we will move into the public meeting. Can I have a mover and seconder call a public meeting to order? Deputy Mayor Coughlin, Councillor Ma Chapman that this meeting of council held under section 34 of the Planning Act for application ZB 2022-006 regarding Schultz be called to order at 6.32 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Welcome to this public meeting of Springwater Township. Council held in compliance with section 34 of the Planning Act to give the public an opportunity to express their views in regard to the proposed amendments to the Township of Springwater zoning bylaws amended. The first part of this meeting is to present the amendment. Following, the public will be given the opportunity to make an oral submission through the Zoom application. Any person wishing to make an oral submission must have notified the Township prior to 8.30 a.m. this morning and must have been added to the commenters list. If a person or public body who files an appeal of a decision of the Township of Springwater in respect of a zoning bylaw amendment, does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or written submissions to the Township of Springwater before the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is passed, the Ontario Land Tribunal may dismiss all or part of the appeal. All comments or questions should be addressed through myself as chair. Oral submissions will be included in this meeting's minutes and form part of the public record, including the name and address of the speaker as information collected under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. The minutes of the meeting will be posted on the Township website. Tonight we're dealing with ZB 2022-006 by R. Schultz regarding 2482 South Boar Lake Road. I will now call upon the clerk to confirm notice of this meeting and the dates on which notice was given. Notice of this public meeting was mailed on the 25th day of May, 2022, to the owner of the subject lands and to the assessed owners of 21 properties in the Township of Springwater within 240 meters of the area to which the proposed amendments would apply, and to all persons and public bodies as prescribed under the Planning Act and its regulations. Notice was also posted at the assessed property to which the proposed amendments apply at a location that was visible from South or Lake Road. The notice was also placed on the township's website. Has the planning department received any correspondence in response to the notice of public meeting? Correspondence was received from the Township of Springwater Building Department in an email dated May 24th, 2022, and from Enbridge in an email dated June 2nd, 2022. The correspondence can be found attached to tonight's agenda. Thank you. I'll now call upon Director Spagnol to give a presentation outlining the purpose and effect of the proposal. Thank you, Merrill, and uh, members of Council. The, uh, the purpose of the zoning bylaw amendment is essentially to allow for the conversion of the existing property to allow for a permanent residential dwelling unit. The effect of the by of a dwelling unit that is to be constructed, and also to recognize deficient lot area and a deficient side yard setback through the zoning process. The property is designated Lakeside Residential 
and would be zoned as a residential conversion exception zone to permit the use. Uh, planning staff have reviewed the application for conformance and uh, under, the, under the official plan and are of the opinion that the application conforms to the policies um, as identified within the Lakeside residential designation. That concludes my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions that Council may have. Thank, Thank you. you, Director. I'll, I'll now call upon the moderator to provide the number of people who have registered to ask questions or make comments regarding this application. Thank you, Mayor Allen. There are no commenters registered to make an oral submission for this application. Thank you. Do any council members have questions or comments regarding this application? Seeing none, I thank uh, all of you who participated in the public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and for showing interest in this matter. May I have a mover and second to adjourn the public meeting? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ritchie, that this public meeting of council held under section 34 of the Planning Act, re ZB 2022 uh, 006, re Schultz does now adjourn at 6 36 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Can I have a mover and a seconder to receive direction following the public meeting, please? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ma Chapman. And that is that the report from the planner regarding ZB 2022-006 Schultz dated June 15th, 2022 be received and then bylaw 5000-354 be presented to council for consideration and approval on June 15th, 2022, subject to comments received during the public meeting. All those in favor? That is carried. Moving on in the agenda to, uh, one second, please. Yeah question periods later on. Deputations and presentations. We have a draft a plan of subdivision presentation with respect to 980 St. Vincent Street in Midhurst. I will now call upon Jonathan Godfrey to present the draft plan of subdivision application regarding 980 St. Vincent Street in Midhurst. Mr. Godfrey. Hi, good evening, Mayor Allen and members of council. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much for taking the time this evening. Uh, I am uh, um, in front of you this evening to present uh, um, some information about a development that is going to be submitted to uh, the Township of Springwater, a draft plan application sometime either the end of this week or early next week. Um, it's a project that I've been working on for approximately 11 years, um, working originally with the Mallory family who owned the property uh, back to the 1970s. Uh, it's a, approximately a 42 acre property, um, which um, I'm going to just share my screen so I can show you where it's located in, in, uh, in the town of Midhurst. So this here on the left over here is uh, Carson Road and Bayfield Street. And over to the right is St. Vincent Street. Um, this is a piece of land that is a is very flat, very cleared uh, table land. Um, and what we're proposing is a 32 lot subdivision each of the lots having uh, 30 meter frontages and uh, over 2000 square meters or over a half acre each and the development. Uh, it's proposed to, um, the entry to the, to the development is proposed off of St. Vincent Street uh, to the right. And um, the, if, you, if you look to the right, can you see my mouse 
uh, over? Yes, we okay. can. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so at the entrance is the stormwater uh, management area. Uh, to the left here is a large public park uh, over an acre in size that will eventually become um, the uh, township of Springwater property, as well as the entire circumference of the property, which is approximately uh, a, a little bit less than 15 acres, uh, which will be will go to the township as well. Uh, it's uh, environmentally protected land, but there's a, a, a trail that we've proposed going around the outside of it, which also creates a link um, to Carson Road and the Paddy Dunn Circle area, um, which uh, a link which which up till today um, hasn't existed in that section of Midhurst, and uh, we're aware that that uh, you know that there's there's some sort of uh, um, when when you look at Midhurst, it's a little divided, and there's one side of it and the other side of it, and we think that this development will provide a a nice linkage between. Uh, the eastern and the western parts of Midhurst. Um, we uh, uh, recently, back in March of 2022, um, uh, went to have, it's, the, we've been through a process for, I'm sorry, for quite some time. Uh, we, we did an appeal with the LPAT on the property. Um, minutes of settlement were agreed to and uh, completed through the OLT in March of uh, 2020. Uh, 2022, just this year. And this is the new map, which shows this section in the area, which is the property, which has now a Midhurst village designation, which is the same designation of the existing town of Midhurst surrounding it and to the left with Patty Dunn Circle and Car Carson Ridge Estates. And um, we, we um, have been through the entire pre-consultation process uh, on the property. Um, we have um, completed all of the studies that have been requested and required. And we really look to build this um, development ecology first. So um, we spent a lot of time, three or four years going back and forth with the NVCA uh, to determine um, what, what the best uses for the property were. And this is, this is sort of the eventuality of that that we've come up with, uh, which will be submitted. So we, this is a, a quick image of our draft plan submission. Uh, you'll notice at the top, Willow Creek runs across the north of the property. There'll be trails running along here, uh, as well as around the whole property. It's about a kilometer and a half of trail system that will move around the property, and then it will be linked again to the to the west out towards uh, Bayfield Street and Carson Road. So the purpose of, of our delegation this evening is really to provide uh, uh, Mayor Allen and, and members of council with information of, uh, about what we're planning on doing uh, with our development and answer any questions uh, that, that may arise. Um, and um, I really appreciate the time that, uh, that you've given us to show what, what our plan is. Uh, just to show a couple of more images very quickly, this is the current zoning of the property. So uh, along with our draft plan application, we'll also be submitting a, uh, a zoning amendment. Um, the zoning of all the areas all around are R1 or R1 with a, uh, a, a um, uh, a specification, I'm sorry if the term is escaping me afterwards, and that's what we'll be seeking on, on this property here as well. So we've worked um, very, very hard to um, make sure that what we're doing um, fits in to the Midhurst secondary plan, uh, into the, uh, the Springwater official plan, as well as the, the, the County of Simcoe's official plan, and uh, it conforms uh, it to, to pretty much everything uh, across the board. So I'm, I'm here to answer any questions that you have. And I really appreciate your giving us the time this evening to give you a little bit of information about what we're planning. Thank you, Mr. Godfrey. Uh, I'll now open it up to questions or comments from Council. Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And, and I guess my first question should go to Mr. Godfrey. And I, and I should say that I have had conversations with 
Mr. Godfrey, and uh, he was very helpful in answering my uh, concerns. Look, Mr. Godfrey, if you could pull up your first slide, please. Uh, I'm not sure if you can put it back up or not. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, my first slide, I believe, is this here? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, okay. I just, my question is related to the discussion we had with relation to Carson Road uh, being a road allowance and it dead ends actually your property. And I have to be honest, I did not know that Carson Road Road Allowance did not go all the way through to St. Vincent. And uh, you did explain that to me and now I understand that. So my question to you, sir, as I see Carson Road, it looks like it ends on what I would appear to be green space in your project. Is that done in case Carson Road ever is extended through to uh, your property and you'd be able to have access to that or is that just a coincidence? No, it's not entirely a coincidence. I mean, um, having having been um, working on this property for as many years as I have, it's it, it would be, I, I would be silly not to realize that there might be an opportunity for Carson Road to be opened. Um, and it makes a lot of sense from a, a number of perspectives. Um, if, if I just switch quickly to this map here, you'll see that the vast majority of the area between the property and the edge of uh, Paddy Dunn Circle and the commercial um, development that's at the corner of Bayfield and Carson Road. This is all EP1. Um, and our development as it stands, it's only a 32 lot development and only really requires single access. And our access is from, um, is from St. Vincent Street. So that's how we're proposing the development. But I agree with you that that it may make sense uh, at some point for Carson Road to be opened. Essentially, this land is already owned by the township, this land through the center here. This land will be owned by the township as well as, as uh, part of what's being given um, as, as the EP block that surrounds it. And this here is a is an open park space. So you know the the uh, and then of course the roads themselves will will eventually once this is uh, has been approved or uh, uh, will be part of the municipality's ownership as well so this area all the way from the left to the right you currently can't go across in the way that it is uh, there's there is a hydro easement that goes across the center and we've spoken with hydro about moving poles along the roadways and so on and so forth but this actually creates an this development creates an opportunity for the township to um, have a, 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 a throughway. Um, the way we're proposing it is a pedestrian throughway, uh, but in the future, and I think it will take a number of years to get to that point. It may well make sense to open up Carson Road to both sides, and uh, if you know, and the township will own own the land in order to do it as well. Follow on. Uh, thank you. And through the chair, and thank you, Mr. Godfrey, and through the chair to our director of planning. Uh, director of planning, uh, Mr. Spagnol, could you tell us if there's any plans in the long range future with regard to the uh, property that's on both sides of that uh, road allowance? And, and I know as anybody that drives in there and heading on Carson Road to Paddy Dunn Circle, the way it, the road's blocked off, it appears that sometime the road might go through. I'm not aware of any plans to do that, but I don't know if we're are any long range plans or if that's just environmentally, environmentally protect the land there? Director Spagel. Thank you, Morale, through to Councilor Hanna. I can confirm that there are not any long range plans for development to occur on the north or south side of the unopened road allowance for Carson Road. Uh, Councilor Hanna is correct that those lands are designated for environmental protection one purposes and they are also zoned uh, EP as well. So at this point, there are no long range plans for development along that unopened road allowance. Thank you. Other questions, comments, council? Okay, can I have a, a mover and seconder please to uh, receive the delegation? Clerk Gainsworth has a comment. Uh, thank you. Yes, Mayor Allen. Councillor Chapman did have a, a comment. Yeah, I just saw that card. Sorry, Councillor Chapman. Not Chapman. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, no worries. I, I was going to ask the same question as Councillor Anna with Carson Road. So thanks for answering that. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Godfrey. 
Pleasure. And I do like the um, idea that the trails around around the subdivision. I think that's a great idea that a lot of greenery out there in Willow Creek. So I really like the idea of the trails and it gives them a unique um, look to the to that property. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just thought of something that I had thought of earlier. If all goes according to Hoyle, Mr. Godfrey, what would be your uh, desired time frame, target time frame for uh, starting to pull building permits and building? Well, I, I, from what I understand from speaking with Director Spagnol, uh, the, the draft plan, plan period is somewhere within six months to a year. Um, this this the, is being proposed um, as a partially serviced development, which is very similar to the way that the existing Midhurst is developed. And our functional servicing report um, indicates that there's more than enough capacity for water uh, services along Bayfield Street, which will come along uh, the Carson Road development, uh, sorry, the Carson Road uh, unopened road allowance. Um, so our hope is that that uh, that council, this is something that that council and the town um, will find acceptable. We work very hard to make it that and uh, that that the turnaround will be sometime within the next year before we're able to proceed. We'd like to proceed as quickly as we can. OK. Thank you. Can I have a mover and seconder to receive the delegation, please? Councillor uh, Ma Chapman and Councillor Moore, the delegation from Jonathan Godfrey from S. Godfrey and Co. Limited regarding the draft plan of subdivision application for uh, 980 St. Vincent Street, Midhurst, be received. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you again, Mr. Godfrey. We'll be Thank you all very room. much. I just very quickly like to say that over the last 10 or so years, it really has been a pleasure uh, working with the town of Springwater. Everybody's been very helpful through the process, even though it's been a long process. Uh, so thank you for that. And thank you for the time this evening. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, next we're moving to 5.2. And I'll now call upon CEO Schmidt to present a progress update on Council's strategic priorities. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I'll just uh, have the presentation put up here. One sec here. Sorry about that. Can everybody see that uh, on your Yes, end? thanks. Great. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Allen, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, and members of council. Uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity to present this evening. My presentation is intended to provide council and our residents with a progress update on council's 2021-2022 strategic priorities. I would ask that you please hold your questions until the end of my presentation, at which time I'd be more than happy to, to entertain. Uh, next slide, please. As you may recall, back in the early part of 2021, each member of council was requested to provide their top three to five priorities in which they would like to see completed by the end of this term of council. And on September 13th of last year, a special meeting was held in which council approved resolution SC445-2021, which included the approval of nine strategic priorities. The first three, first three strategic priorities are listed here on this slide, which include the continuation with the development of the phase one and two of the community hub. Number two is the completion of the service delivery review, which includes the IT master plan. And the third is the completion of the township's official plan. Next slide, please. Uh, the remaining six strategic priorities are listed here, which include uh, completing the comprehensive compensation review, enhancing staff's recognition program and negotiating a new collective agreement, uh, continuing to manage growth in a sustainable fashion, uh, finalize the formation of our, of our new OPP detachment board, continue to develop our asset management roadmap, and finally, to create a financial policy framework. Uh, the next few slides will provide you with the progress that staff and council have made since September of last year on these strategic priorities. Next slide, please. 
So let's start with strategic priority number one. So continue progress on phase one and two of the community hub, or better known as the community or as the hasty track. So phase one of this uh, of this priority includes the construction of a new fire station, as well as partnering with the county of Simcoe in the construction of a new EMS post. So uh, progress to date, uh, tree clearing has been completed on the site. Staff is currently working on a tender, which should be released shortly, which would bring water and other services to this site. As for the fire station, as you'll see on tonight's agenda, a new de design will be presented uh, for your consideration with the hopes that council will approve this design and provide direction to staff to move forward in issuing a tender for the ultimate construction of the new fire station. And staff continue to work with the county on their EMS post, and we are in the process of trying to finalize agreements with them and hopefully uh, commence construction in 2023 uh, at the earliest. Phase two of the project includes the development of a master plan. So as you may be aware, Township has engaged Weston Consulting to assist in preparing the master plan. Uh, community engagement sessions, which were uh, completed by the subconsultant, 80 cities, has just wrapped up with over 601 surveys being completed, which is in addition to all of the community outreach that was completed by the consultant. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, strategic priority number two, the completion of the service delivery review, including the IT master plan. So the service delivery review and IT master plan have both recently been completed. So that strategic priority has been addressed. Uh, strategic priority number three, completion of official plan. This priority is slightly behind schedule. However, staff is still targeting to bring something forward to council in July of this year. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, st strategic priority number four, the completion of a comprehensive compensation plan. So this priority was completed earlier this year. And again, so that, uh, that priority has been addressed. Strategic priority number five, which is enhanced staff recognition program and negotiate collective agreement. So for staff recognition, a new employee uh, newsletter was launched in December of last year, whereby staff were recognized for certain service milestones. So for those that reached uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 year service and so on. In addition, staff were also formally recognized at the February 2nd, 22 council meeting for their service milestones. Most recently, a staff foursome was entered into the Spring Water Swing Golf Tournament in an effort to further recognize staff for going above and beyond over the past year. In addition, a staff recognition lunch and barbecue has been scheduled for July 6th, so hope to see you all there. And staff still are, are anticipating on reviewing and updating our formal staff recognition policy with the intent of having something completed by the end of this year, early next year. Unfortunately, due to some staff changeover in our administration area, uh, we have not been able to uh, move this uh, forward as quickly as what we liked, but uh, the goal is still to have something, like I said, completed by the end of this year. As for the collective agreement, meetings have been taking place over the course of uh, the first few months of this year, and we have some additional meetings scheduled for the end of this month. We are hopeful that we'll have something to council in the very near future. Uh, next slide, please. So the next three slides concentrate on strategic priority number six, which is to continue to manage growth in a sustainable manner. This slide speaks to some of the sustainable development initiatives that have been undertaken or that are anticipated to commence this year. To highlight a few of these initiatives, staff and council have now completed. Uh, number one, we've updated the township's development charge background study and bylaw, which now includes the provision of front ending agreements, as well as uh, prepayment of DCs for hard service related infrastructure. So those, uh, those infrastructure being roads, water, wastewater. We've also updated the township's long range financial plan, completed the Midhurst secondary, secondary plan environmental assessment and master drainage plan. We've also completed the intensification study and Bayfield Street Corridor study. And we've also implemented a new bylaw for additional residential units. In addition, there are a few other initiatives that are underway and we aim to have these completed in 2023. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide here continues with strategic priority number six and specifically provides an update on all the major development applications for Midhurst, so neighborhood one and two as well as Center Vespera. I was not intending on going through each of these, but uh, maybe when um, my formal presentation is done, I'm happy to answer any questions if council should have any. Next slide. And this slide here also provides further insights on strategic prior number six, and more specifically, those major uh, developments uh, in Ant Mills, uh, Elmville and Hillsdale. And next slide, please. And this last slide here speaks to strategic priorities number seven, eight, and nine. So strategic priority number seven is the finalized formation of the new OPP detachment board. 
Uh, as you're aware, the composition of the board has been approved by council. However, staff is still awaiting further direction from the province on the next steps related to this initiative. So once uh, we obtain that information, we'll be sharing that with council. As for strategic prior number eight is to continue developing our asset management roadmap, which includes township facilities. Staff is currently working with our consultant public sector digest and are aiming to have something to council by September. As it relates to our asset management roadmap, we are running a little behind on this priority as we've experienced again, some staff turnover. As, as you may be aware earlier this year, our asset management coordinator did uh, decide to explore another opportunity. And hence we're just in the final stages of actually finalizing the recruitment for that replacement. But again, anticipating on having uh, something to council by September. Uh, facility assessment study has been uh, recently completed by our consultants uh, and staff will be bringing forward a report to council for your consideration, hopefully in the next month or so here. And then finally, strategic priority number nine, creation of a financial policy framework. Uh, work on this priority Priority has yet to commence, but staff do anticipate on bringing something forward for council's consideration in 2023. And next slide. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes the formal part of my presentation this evening. At this time, I'm happy to entertain any questions that council may have. And thank you. Thank you, uh, CEO Schmidt. Uh, questions, comments? Maybe if you could uh, shrink the presentation, I'll see everybody. Councillor Cabral. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to um, say thank you to CAO Schmidt. I found it very informative and it was uh, an easy read the way it was uh, color coded there on what had been completed and roughly when it had happened. So, and it was uh, a nice concise uh, snapshot. So thank you for that. I, uh, I got a lot out of it. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah, definitely a good report card. Uh, Councillor Ritchie. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Allen, through to Jeff. Uh, same as uh, Councillor Cabral, uh, very informative. And uh, let's keep moving forward, move the order of business for the, of the township along. So uh, well done, thank you. Thank you. Can I have a mover and seconder then to receive the presentation from CAO Schmidt, Councillor Moore, Councillor Cabral, that the presentation from CAO Schmidt regarding the progress update on the council strategic priorities be received. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, question period, item six in the agenda, members of the public can ask questions of council or make comments regarding an item on the agenda. To uh, be able to do that, uh, people are asked to contact the clerk's department by noon of the day of the meeting to submit the question or submit a desire to present a question um, live. And uh, that is processed. Further details are on the agenda tonight with respect to question period. Procedure. Clerk Ainsworth, have any submissions been received? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. One submission was received from Jody Stevens of 2988 Marshall Road, and she writes, Good evening, Mayor Allen, members of Council, Springwater staff, and fellow residents. This statement is contributed by the residents of Marshall Road with input from surrounding neighborhoods. With respect to agenda item 9.2, update on parking at Orr Lake, we would like to thank Township staff and the Council for their work on this matter. We are pleased that all proposed options include no parking signs on Marshall Road. We trust that there will be further consultation with the residents regarding the placement of any newly created parking spaces. We're grateful to hear no trees will be removed. Per staff's report, Marshall is not a road, but a 66 foot wide uh, lane right of way and the only way for two families to access their homes. We assume our access, privacy, and security will be considered as well as any potential bottlenecks for waste pickup and delivery of essentials. It should be noted that Hydro One accesses equipment uh, that services multiple properties from the poles on Marshall Road. The two options that deal with expanding the parking area at the municipal park are forward thinking and the key to getting more locals and day trippers alike to enjoy the lake in an appropriate setting grass, shade, picnic tables, a swimming area and playground, garbage receptacles and washrooms. For too many years, the park has been bypassed by lake visitors who have either been directed to or stumbled upon the gravel expanses of Marshall Road and North Shore Boat Launch, not knowing we have a beautiful park available to them. 
by making it easier and more pleasant to use, and with signage helping visitors to know it exists, we hope more people can enjoy our beautiful lake via the Orr Lake Park. On behalf of Marshall Road residents, thank you again for responding to our needs and concerns. We look forward to communication with staff on the specifics once passed. Thank you. And uh, thank you for those comments. And uh, they will be certainly considered when we uh, discuss this shortly at 9.2 in the agenda. Moving on to 7.1 adoption of the minutes of council. Can I have a mover and seconder for that, please? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Moore, that the minutes of council listed herein be approved. And those are the June 1st, 2022 special meeting of council. Any comments? All those in favor? That is carried. 7.2 minutes of boards and committees and organizations. Can I have a mover and seconder to receive these minutes, please? Deputy Mayor Coughlin, Councillor Ma Chapman. The minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee meeting of Feb 15, 2022, and the minutes of the Cultural Advisory Committee meeting of March 1, 2022. Any comments? All those in favor? Is carried. Uh, moving on to item eight, correspondence and information items. There's one 8.1, and that's correspondence from the County of Simcoe regarding the establishment of the Information Library Service, ILS it's called, dated June 2nd, 2022. And I have a mover and seconder to receive the correspondence from the County of Simcoe on this. Deputy Mayor Coughlin and Councillor Moore. Uh, any questions uh, with respect to this? It reads that the correspondence from the County of Simcoe regarding the establishment of information library service dated June 2nd, 2022 be received. All those in favor? That is carried. <clears throat> Uh, right, action reports. We have uh, 9.1, the update on the fire station at 1132 Snow Valley Road. Uh, I'll now call upon General Manager Ram Dale to introduce the update on the fire station two at 1132 Snow Valley Road, please. Good evening, Mayor Allen, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, members of council. Uh, this evening's present, this evening's presentation shall be by our architect, Ms. Rima Masri, who will present a short video uh, followed by an explanation of the site plan and the layout, and then we'll be open to questions. Uh, I now call in Ms. Masri. Uh, thank you, Mr. Randio, and uh, good evening, Mayor and Councillors. So I will start um, the video and then I will be going through um, the presentation. So I won't be commenting to the video, but um, just give me one second. Apologize, I'm trying to navigate. Um, can my screen be seen? Yes, we can see that now. Thank you. Great. Sorry about the delay.
Uh, so if desired, I can run the video again a little later. But right now, I would like to um, just go through the plans and um, explain um, what the design process resulted in. Um, so this is the site plan, and you can see the proposed fire station is uh, shown in, in gray on the left side. And uh, the building is positioned in a way so that it is close to the Snow Valley Road. And um, it has a direct entrance off of the street. And um, the idea that it maintain its uh, presence on the street and, and create um, a sympathetic public run. Uh, we had to push it a little further back um, just because the aprons for uh, fire uh, apparatus, they need to be deep. Uh, but this is works technically and it's close as possible to the street. And um, on the right hand, we have um, the driveway access to um, our site and, and the paramedic site as well. Um, so this driveway takes us to the back of the building, which is where um, the parking um, is located. And also there are the back entry doors uh, for the apparatus bay. Um, here is the entrance, um, which is kind of the main entrance that will be used most often because of the location of the parking. And uh, we have some um, loading areas to some of the service areas that are um, um, related to the apparatus bay. And um, what we're showing here, this is the lot line. We're about seven and a half meter from the easterly lot line. And, and that's a zoning requirement. And all, on our right is the, the paramedic uh, station um, that will share the site. So um, the floor plan is a rectilinear building, um, which is um, all functional uh, based on um, the requirement for the fire base. We have four um, double loaded fire base with these doors facing Snow Valley and these doors in the back facing the, the back entrance. So basically this, uh, the, the plan is divided into two sections. If we wanna look at that that way, there is uh, the office area on the left, um, and then there is the, the fire or apparatus area on the right. The, on the apparatus side, as I said, so there is the apparatus space, and then there is a, um, 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 small sliver which has uh, some service areas. Um, basically, we have the bunker gear with an entrance off of the parking lot for quick access when there is an emergency um, with the doors allowing the firefighters access to the vehicles as quickly as possible. Um, and then we have um, other storage areas and filling the uh, breathing devices and the hose power for, for drying the hoses. On the um, right-hand side, I'm shrinking this a little bit, what I call the office area is really two subsections and they're positioned around this corridor that connects the entrances, the, the entrance off of the street and the entrance off of the parking. To the left side is, is the offices. They kind of go all around the space. And then we have a meeting room in the middle, a training room, which is close to the street. And um, in between the fire base and the office area, these are the more utilitarian areas which are used uh, both on the, from the office side and, and the, the apparatus base side. Um, and they need to be there for proximity. Uh, for example, the, the shower and locker areas. So they also allow quick access to the apparatus base from both sides. Um, there is the women uh, washroom, locker, shower area, and then the, the male locker, shower, and washroom area. We have two washrooms. Let me zoom a little more. Uh, where we have two washrooms that, um, this one is mainly a public washroom and it is accessible. 
And the second washroom is um, a universal washroom with a shower. Um, by code, we do require an accessible shower since we have showers in the building. And this one um, can be used by staff, uh, but they both are um, gender neutral. And um, zooming out again, on um, this side, we have a fitness room um, that can in, in the future change to more offices. We have a, a single office here um, located closer to the apparatus space uh, for the station officer. Um, we have a small shower uh, for decontamination with an access from outside. And um, on the bottom here, we have the day room for firefighters with a small kitchen. And, and the rest small areas are also um, just a mechanical room, electrical room, um, a few storage areas, um, and the copy area. And um, lastly, we have a patio, uh, which is associated with the day room but it also uh, kind of forms the entrance and the positioning of the building uh, from, uh, as it's seen from the street. And uh, one thing I should point out, there is a, a stair here that takes us to a mezzanine. Um, basically it's a bonus area that we gain because of the high roofs with the, with the trusses. Um, and since the washroom can be a little lower, so we gain this bonus area, which can be used as a storage. And um, I go through the elevations, which will give you um, more time to absorb how the uh, building looks from the exterior. I know that the video was a little too fast. So this is the main elevation from the uh, Snow Valley Road. Um, so if we want to go through it, if you see my mouse, um, this is the entrance off of the street. This is the wall of the training room, which is black. We don't want windows on the presentation wall. And uh, we use that for signage. Um, the apparatus doors, the host tower. Um, and you can see some windows uh, at the top. It's a large area and the roofs are quite large. So, so we benefited in breaking up the roof uh, for two purposes. One is to reduce the snow falling off uh, or control it so that um, it doesn't fall off where we need to keep the, the aprons clean. But also we benefited uh, from that by bringing natural light in. And um, on the back, on the, um, the parking area elevation, um, the fire uh, bay area is similar. You can see on the left, the, the firefighters access to the bunker gear, and then um, the main entrance, um, the, these windows are office windows. And, and we have some um, man doors or uh, for access to the uh, fire base so that we're not opening a big door to go in and out for people, which conserves energy. Then uh, side elevations, this is the west. Um, we're also bringing light into the office area. And it, this also hides the mechanical area that is behind. And this is from the east, from the apparatus bay side. It's, it's quite functional with um, the doors, um, these are doors to the storage rooms for uh, loading uh, tanks and supplies and so on. So um, um, this is my presentation. Um, um, the main thing I want to say um, that the design, um, it, it, we were successful in making it attractive as, as a um, from, from the exterior as a, a major uh, public facility. But in a sense, if you look at the plan, um, it, it's really simple um, and it is basically, basically driven by function. And the materials we're using are 
uh, basic uh, materials, but durable, that because durability is a sustainable practice and, and fire stations normally are very, um, you know, high demand in, in terms of the performance of the building. And, and durability of a building is also important for the, the investment that, that being put in. So basically we have load bearing, uh, load bearing uh, concrete walls and we have uh, metal trusses and exterior finishes, masonry and siding. So thank you. Okay, I see your card, Councillor Ritchie. Let me just go to General Manager Ramdeo before I open it up to uh, questions, comments. Okay, General Manager. <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, our next steps is after today's meeting, hopefully with Council's concurrence on the design, is to move to our tender process, uh, which we hope to be in a few weeks. Um, our tender will be a design build tender which will take our design, which is a preliminary design, and allow the contractors to bring their ingenuity to the table, hopefully to give us better ways, more efficient ways of building this, uh, this building and give us the best value for, for our money. Um, and that's the, the, the next steps that we do have going forward. Thanks. So. Okay, can I get a mover and secondary to get this on the floor for discussion, please? Councillor Moore and Councillor Ritchie. Uh, Councillor Ritchie. Yes, thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, through to the architect, thank you for the presentation and to Bahesh as well too, for all your work. Uh, first thing that comes to mind, I've, I've read your information, but I don't see, are the floors heated? Are they insulated? That's my uh, question. Ms. Masri? No, they're not. Um, they're not heated. Um, the, um, the code requires um, perimeter insulation typically, uh, but they're not heated. Follow on. Yes, uh, in, our, in our second term, we, a uh, bunch of us got a chance to go up and look at the new fire hall in Cape Township uh, that they had just built. We viewed it, it was very nice. Their floors were heated and they just spoke so highly of having the, uh, of the floors being insulated and heated. And uh, I, I did it in the new house that I just built last year. And uh, I, 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 for the extra cost, I think it's worth it going forward. So we can uh, work that into the numbers, but uh, it, it's, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice building, but uh, I'd like to hear more from the other council members, but I'd like to hear from you what your thoughts are. Again, on, on heated floors, I, I, they're, the, they're the thing to have. That's what everybody's going to. Economically, uh, it, you you put the money out, but you get it back in savings in uh, reduced heating uh, costs, and uh, everything's just so much warmer, healthier, all the way around. Those are my comments. Thank you. What are your thoughts on that, Ms. Masri? Um, well, like everything else, there, there's always pros and cons. Um, you know, hydronic heating, which is water-based heating, which which is used typically in in-floor heating is a very efficient way to move uh, heat more than blowing air. Um, however, of course it comes at an extra cost. Um, in, in this case, uh, because we also have air conditioning, uh, it means that, um, oh, sorry, I have to explain, the air conditioning is only in the office areas, not, not the fire base. Um, that, that may mean that we have to double on the mechanical system, you know, have both the hydronic uh, piping and then also have the ducts for, um, for cooling. Um, so that can, can cost extra money. There is a, a way out of that if we use geothermal uh, for, for heating and cooling. Um, which helps a little bit with that duplication, but then it presents another challenge with the extra costs, uh, significant extra costs for the geothermal heating, uh, drilling, sorry. Follow on, Councilor Ritchie. Yeah, I just want to follow up, Mayor Allen. Um, like um, like to, move, to move the order of business along here, this thing's been dragging on here for a number of years. And, uh, but I think the moving along to send it to tender, it'd be worth adding that on with the tender to see 
you know, what's what's the extra cost of doing that and and and, and bring it back to council and let us decide because whether whoever the new council is, uh, but like move it forward. But, you know, what's the extra cost? Whatever the cost is, it's worth it. These new buildings you see, subway stations, platform stations for TTC, they're all in floor uh, hydronic heating. Uh, I know because uh, I know people that work de designing and building these things and uh, year round uh, it's extra cost, but it's definitely worth it uh, all the way around. And I think that should be added. And those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. Good point. General manager, did you have any comment on this, please? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, through you to Councillor Ritchie and to add to what Ms. Masri noted earlier. Um, during the design process, yes, we did consider um, in-floor heating, uh, so to speak. There were two challenges that we faced with it. One was the cost. The second one was response time to, to warm the building, to, to heat the building. Uh, when trucks do come in, that response time. In-floor heating tends to be slower to respond. Um, so there, we, we looked at it from that perspective. Um, from the perspective of environmental um, benefits, we did go through an analysis of what sort of heating would benefit us or what sort of heat source would benefit us. And what we decided in this particular case is that we are going with open source um, heating, which if my numbers are correct, for every unit of energy that we put into it, we get something like three to four energy units back out. Um, and that's the system that we've designed and we spec for this building. So we've got the, the environmental aspect, we've got the cost benefit aspect in there. Um, and as I said, in our analysis of in-floor, there was concern as the response time for it. We know it feels really good when you do have it. Um, but with the response time, we would have had to, as uh, Ms. Masri said, we would have had to have duplicate systems for one, cooling, and two, the rapid response of, of heating in the apparatus space as well. Okay, um, Councillor Moore. Oh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, such an exciting project. I just have a question for the architect, if I may. Looking forward, and, and the, the fire station will be there for generations. And eventually I'm hoping that our firefighters will be full time they'll be on a schedule like what we see south of south of here. Is there um, provisions for sleeping? So if potentially we're looking at a 24 hour shift even, so what they do south of here, what, how would we accommodate our firefighters for that? And if, if I just may tack onto that, I was going to ask a question about parking uh, how, because yeah. I, I, I'm not sure uh, where the parking is going to be and how many uh, uh, spaces there are for vehicles, both now and in the future, to Councillor Moore's question. So go ahead, uh, Ms. Masri. Thank you. Um, um, according to the direction from uh, Fire Chief Kirk, um, there is accommodation for, um, for uh, bunker beds. Uh, the plan is that the training room will double uh, when the need arises to accommodate bunker beds that will be installed, uh, as I understand, like uh, Murphy beds around the, around the training room. In terms of parking, um, we uh, consulted with the planning department and, and per their um, um, uh, interpretation of the zoning, we would advise that we would need about 50 parking spaces and as I understand, that's um, a lot more than what the fire station would require currently. Um, and um, I think from what I understood that it should be more than sufficient for the future. Okay, uh, Chief Kirk. No, thank you, Mayor Allen. And, and through you to uh, Councillor Moore, um, uh, uh, Ms. Basri is correct. The, the design of the training room will, will encompass what we call Murphy beds. So they fold up into the wall and they look like a wall and they can look quite nice uh, in regard to aesthetics. So uh, typically um, 
fire stations uh, are doing that so they can have a multifunctional room. So there is provisions in there as, as there is other provisions in, in both uh, the locker room areas. Uh, we've got provisions for enough lockers for full-time staff plus volunteers and also the uh, uh, bunker gear room where we have e enough, uh, enough bunker gear uh, uh, lockers uh, to uh, house all the PPE, the personal protective equipment that both a career firefighter and the volunteer fire, firefighters would need. So uh, we're looking into the future. We're not looking for today, but we're, but we're trying to set the township up to, uh, to serve uh, the residents out of this station for probably 40 plus years. So hopefully that answers your question. Thanks. Uh, Councillor March Alan. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I just had a question on Apparatus Bay. Is there eight of them or is there four? And if there's four, would they drive around to the back and drive through? Or if there's eight, would they back up and then would the to the front and would there be enough space to back up because it looks close to Stone Valley Road? Chief Kirk. Yeah, through you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Ma Chapman. They are, there are four bays, double deep. So it, they can house uh, eight pieces of apparatus. So currently that station with the addition of the aerial apparatus, that station will have two pumps, uh, a tanker, an aerial, uh, what I call a runabout, a pickup truck uh, for moving manpower and equipment. And then um, the two trailers that we currently have at station three that sit out in the elements, uh, there would be room to park those inside where they would be better suited out of climate. So um, the other advantage to um, drive through bays is anytime you're building a fire station now, you try to avoid backing these heavy pieces of apparatus up simply for safety. So it's nice that they could uh, uh, drive straight through. They might have to remove a piece of equipment to do so. But it also gives you the option if you have a, a malfunction of a, an apparatus door, we have the ability to uh, move the truck and respond out of the back of the uh, fire station. So, and I've personally experienced that several times with, uh, with that, uh, losing a door. So it gives that, again, that redundancy for response. Deputy Mayor Coughlin. There we go. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. And through you to, to Chief Kirk, the entrance at the front that will be shared with the recreation complex appears to be one lane. Is that going to be expanded when the recreation complex comes on? I just know that at Tree Nursery Park, when there's um, a lot of activity, I was just curious if that was going to be wider. Maybe you could throw the diagram back up, uh, Ms. Masri, please. So uh, through you, Mayor Allen, to uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, just so I'm correct, because the front of the building is actually the back of the building. Are we talking the apron at the front that faces Snow Valley? No, no the, the one closer to Bayfield Street, the, the, in, the in access. So Which... I'll, I'll try to answer your question. And if not, I can defer to uh, General Man uh, Manager Ram Dale. But uh, my understanding is that that'll be a two lane access. I believe that there will eventually be a boulevard in there um, to allow for uh, entry to the uh, proposed uh, other development that's there, the community hub. And it should pose no issue for, for vehicles coming in and out. That'll be the general entrance to the fire station. Follow on. Uh, and thank you. And I, these questions could be later. I just don't know if this is the only time for them. Um, so when when the recplex is built, will there be a right in, right out on Bayfield Street, or was that permitted by MTO? Is this going to be the sole access to the library, recreation, fire, and ambulance? Yeah, that that will be the full access. Uh, uh, when we when we had our initial discussions. Uh, the, uh, the county uh, would only allow one access. So that's why you see the one access that will service both, uh, both developments. And of course we have our response access that we share with the, uh, the county paramedics, but that won't be coming in, that'll be going out. 
Okay, but the residents, residents uh, and users of the facility would be coming in and out of that. And I'm just not pertaining to fire. So I do apologize if this conversation should be taking part at a later date, um, but I'm just concerned that that's a lot of traffic to go in and out of one driveway. So I wasn't sure if there was going to be left-hand turn lanes or right-hand turn lanes, um, but that can be for another time. And then I guess my second question would be, um, earlier it was said that there was to be five zero fifty parking spaces. So is there an expansion planned for behind the fire hall? Is it, or is that 50 parking spots included in on this drawing? I'll have to defer that to General Manager Ramdale. General Manager? Uh, through you, Mayor Allen, to Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, yes, there's 50, 50 parking spots on this drawing, um, all in this phase. Okay. Councillor Cabral? Thank you. Just uh, actually a comment. Uh, I want to thank them for the presentation, but I also want to make a comment on the design itself. Uh, it's very attractive on the exterior. Uh, it lends itself to looking like a fire hall with the uh, peak on the, the right hand side. Yet um, I've looked at some of the fire halls that Barry recently built. And uh, although the <clears throat> office area is similar with the peaks, it's uh, they're rather box like a big box where the fire apparatus uh, go in and out of uh, out of their facilities. <clears throat> and this one here isn't um, the uh, the windows above the uh, doors uh, on the Snow Valley side and the peak there uh, really lend itself to making it an attractive building yet. Um, obviously looking at the inside, extremely functional. So uh, I just wanted to say it's a, it's a very, very nice looking building and obviously extremely functional on the inside. The one question I have when it comes to the uh, mezzanine, I was just uh, wondering um, the open space next to it, is that open space looking down or is that just open space that you're not putting mezzanine on that area because the peak's not high enough. Ms. Masri? Um, you mean this area? Yes, ma'am. Um, the idea was that we leave this area open to bring a, a light into the open office area. So if I go to the west elevation, yes, um, yes. so these are the windows looking into the office area. Okay, so nope. thank and, you. And, and to add, I don't believe we'll have enough height in the office in this area to add mezzanine. In the washrooms, as I said, uh, over the washroom area, we dropped the ceiling um, a bit over this area to be able to accommodate the, the mezzanine. Ms. Ms. Masri, the lighting you just referred to through those windows, will that be able to cascade into the mezzanine as well? Or what will be the lighting for the mezzanine? Um, and if we look at the mezzanine plan, so we we have um, this is open into the fire bay from from this side. Um, so and there is borrowed light coming in from these upper windows, and then there are some windows along um, the me the mezzanine wall that overlooks the um, open area, the high ceiling where the window is here. So there will be another source of borrowed light as well. And if we look at the elevations, we have a couple um, um, sort of eyebrow type dormers bringing in light as well. So right. potentially that area can be used for other purposes if the need arises. Okay, good. No, it's very impressive uh, and, and, and not uh, ostentatious. So uh, it's mm -hmm. quite attractive. The comments? All right, uh, can I have a mover and seconder? If you could take the presentation. Oh, Councillor Hannah? You're muted. Sorry about that. I wanted to ask a question about the way this is being financed, but I didn't want to interrupt the questions that were being asked about the architectural design and so on. Is this the appropriate time for that? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So through you to um, Director Ramdale or maybe our, our Director of Finance, in the report it talks about 
the um, fire hall being 75% DC funded and 25% um, financed uh, through debt or, or other. My question is, some of the DC studies that we received information on shows 90%, maybe even 100, but I believe it was 90% for fire um, protection. I just want to make sure that I'm correct that it's still 75 or, or is it 90? I'll start with General Manager Ramdeo on that one and then we can uh, bounce over to Director Radigan. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, I think it's better we go directly to uh, Director <laughs> Radigan. Uh, she, I, might, I might get the numbers incorrect. Director Radigan. Oh, thank you, Mayor Allen. I'm sure you to Councillor Hannah. Um, I do apologize. I do believe there is a minor error in the report. I do believe the report does state 75% DCs and 25% debt. However, with the latest updated study and as a result of the increased costs, the, the DCs are actually 85.7. It is DC, the DCs are 85.7% and the remaining amount is debt. So I do apologize uh, for that error. A uh, follow up, Mayor? Yep. Uh, thank you. I, I, I thank you for the answer, but I'm sure I, I couldn't understand the, the audio. Uh, Mayor, could you just repeat whether it was 90% or 75, please? It's 80, it's in between. It's 85.7% DC. Thank you. So we'll receive a, an updated uh, amount as to what the debt will be eventually? Yes, uh, Director Radigan can uh, circulate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a mover and seconder for the recommendation, please? Uh, Deputy, uh, sorry, Councillor Moore and Councillor Ma Chapman, and that the report from the General Manager of Infrastructure and Operational Services regarding the update on Fire Station 2 at 1132 Snow Valley Road dated June 15, 2022, be received and that Council approve the new Midhurst Fire Station 2 design as presented and that Council direct staff to proceed in moving forward with issuing a procurement tender document for the ultimate construction of Midhurst Fire Station 2. All those in favor? That is unanimously carried, very exciting, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Masri. <clears throat> My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, 9.2 action report update on parking at Orr Lake and the Carson and slash Ann Street unopened road allowance. Can I have a mover and a seconder to get this on the floor, please? Councillor Moore, Councillor Cabral. We'll start by uh, going to General Manager Ramdeo for an overview of the report and the options, please. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, the Orlick uh, analysis looked at all of the potential areas for parking uh, around Orlick. And when we evaluated parking, we evaluated it as a pickup without a trailer. Uh, recognizing that there are some boaters that will come here that will have a trailer and that will occupy possibly up to three parking spaces as opposed to a single one. The, there are three locations, um, general locations, that allow parking around um, Orr Lake. There is the North Orr Lake uh, Boat Launch. There is South Orr Lake Park and Marshall Road itself. The bylaw that is as written implies that if a road is not signed as no parking, then parking is allowed uh, for a maximum of five hours duration and not between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Uh, in the morning. So that analysis went into the report. Um, along North Or Lake Road at the boat launch, there is actually an open space there that allows parking. Um, granted that if there is a pickup truck with a trailer, then the parking spaces will likely be reduced to two of those as opposed to what we noted in the report. At uh, Marshall Road, the length of the roadway itself can accommodate many more car, many more vehicles than I noted in the report. But I took into consideration that there are trees there 
that they are driveways. And I would, if I were living there, I would not want um, pickups or vehicles in front of my driveway. So deleting all of those, that's how I came up with that number that is, that's, I've got in the report. At South Orlake Park, we occupy approximately 82 feet wide area. Of that, we have title to 66 feet, and the remaining 16 feet rests with um, a landowner we believe is deceased and the original um, owner for the land in the area. So our recommendation, we, we presented two recommendations there. The first one is to, if council so desires, to expand the park on the existing area that we've got title for. And if Council also so desires um, to direct us to expand on the entire area, at which point we'll go out to seek transfer of the title of that strip of land to us. Um, so that's that's an overview. Thank you. Mayor Allen, uh, you are muted. Sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Thank you, Mahesh. Uh, for the update there, and I, I spoke to Mahesh when the uh, when this report first came out, and uh, yes, there there's uh, you know he, he there there there's there's six spaces there at the boat launch, but those spaces and all and all to me are for people to park their vehicles while while they're out on the water, and there's no places there's no place there. For the, for a family to have a picnic or anything like that, so it, you can argue this back and forth, but yes, there's parking, but it's there for the people to park their vehicles while they're on the water. To move over to Marshall Road, like he said, yes, there's room, but it'll be a matter of time before they start to complain about people parking. So it, it'll boil down to how much we can get away with with there. But I would like to see is to move forward with uh, expanding the parking at the at the park uh, and 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 I like the option three move forward what we already have with with more parking uh, and obtain the title to that property and and provide more parking and also put up signs to help drive people to go to the park we have a beautiful little park there we have uh, playground sets we have washrooms there's, there's docks, there's swimming, nice sandy beach there to go sanding. It's all there and it's not being used. And if we could put park, provide the parking and, and put the signage up at the boat lodge on Marshall Road, on Whittem Road to drive the people there, this would help solve the problem that we're facing right now. And I think uh, Ms. Stevens uh, spoke about that in her letter as well too. So I'm, I'm for option three. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify, General Manager Ramdeo, in option three, the $50,000 estimate, that's inclusive of acquiring the land, legals, uh, costs for the extra parking. That's that's the, your total estimate to accomplish what is uh, shown in the diagram in the report? Uh, yes, Mayor Allen. That is correct. And it's based upon the assumption that the, act, the, the land itself won't cost us anything that it'll be a transfer over. So what we're paying there is a title search to locate either the owner or the heirs to the owner and the legal and appraisal costs and the survey costs, um, the legal and survey costs, sorry, to transfer the land over to us. Yeah. And the construction, yes, it does include that. And your assumption of no cost for the land is because of the age of this and not being able to find somebody to uh, what what's what's the reasoning for the assumption of zero cost for the land? Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Allen. The owner of the property was the original land owner for the area. So based upon that, we are of the assumption that this land should have been transferred to us many moons ago, but was not um, as part of some agreement. And that's the assumption that we're proceeding upon. It is a strip of land that stretches from the roadway to the lake and is of very little use otherwise, other than 
to us or to the neighbors as an expansion of uh, property. Okay, other comments? Uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. And then, would there be an opportunity then to move forward with the appropriate signage in the other locations and then proceed with this assumption? Um, because I think that the direction for 50, if it's if it's not going to be given to us for free, the cost would then be much more and may need to be reconsidered. So um, if the direction was to look into this further to see if that assumption of land can be transferred, um, and then come back to council with what we'd like to do, because as Councillor Ritchie says, if, if it's the intent of council to um, promote or Lake as more of a recreational use, there might be a more opportunity for us. It's not easy to get down to that park area um, as it is right now. And if you are trailering a kayak canoe or kite board, it is difficult. So there could be some more that we could do um, in tandem with this initiative. General Manager. Uh, yes, Mayor Allen, through you to, to Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, if it is Council's desire to direct this accordingly that way, yes, we will proceed. Um, and yes, in terms of the signage, uh, we have considered the signage on Marshall at the bottom end of Marshall where there is an existing easement um, extending eight feet into the right of way. So we will sign there as well. Other comments, uh, Councillor Machaban. Thank you, Mary Allen. And just to just to clarify, that piece of land that could be transferred is located where is it, Marshall, or is it, or like south? And if we went with option three, is it for additional parking? It's in the report. Uh, it's or Lake south, and you can see in the picture, figure number three. I believe it's that rectangular box to the west of the property. General Manager, is that correct? Uh, through you, Mayor Allen, to, to Councillor Mar Chapman, yes, that is correct. It is the, the little strip to the west of the property. Okay, other comments? Councillor Hannah? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I can't really speak to uh, the situation at Or Lake because I have to rely on the ward councillor. The comment I'd like to speak to is on page eight, and I think uh, the director wrote an excellent report. On page eight, he has a great solution to at least commence uh, with trying to address the parking at Carson Road. My observation is that during the uh, non-winter months, I drive Snow Valley Road at least 10 times a week and Carson Road maybe two or three times a week. So I observe the parking. I can say on the Snow Valley end of Ann Street where there's parking provided by spring water for people to park to walk the trail. There's generally two, three, maybe at a, at a busy day, I might see four or five cars, but lots of parking room there. When I drive Carson Road and I look at the road, unopened road allowance, I'll see two or three cars parked in that unopened road allowance, but still cars parked on the north side of Carson Road facing westerly. My observation is that they chose not to park in the open road allowance and prefer to park on Carson Road. If we do not sign Carson Road, no parking, to force people to either go to the mixed subdivision agreement, if that comes through as the director is suggesting, or to force them to park in the additional on road allowance where we create more spaces, they'll continue to park on Carson Road. So my point being, while these are great initiatives and should help the problem, if you don't stop them from parking on Carson Road where some of them prefer to park, and I would suggest that's because they might get uh, their, their vehicle dirty parking on the uh, dirty, or dirt, I should say, on, on um, the on open road allowance. So I just suggest before we go through all these scenarios, we should still be putting no parking signs on Carson Road. A general manager comment on that? Uh, through you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Hannah. That's a fair point. Um, and on that particular one, I will leave it for the direction of Councillor if to make that area uh, no parking. There is, um, for this season, we have put up signs to direct them to the mixed subdivision. There are a number of parking spots immediately 
adjacent to the on open road allowance um, that have been signed as for the Ann Street parking trail. Um, and we've also have a commitment from the developer not to have his people park there. Follow on Councillor Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. My observation though is, is the same and, and I believe that the resolutions that come forward are excellent, but there are currently no no parking signs on Carson Road. There is a couple on Ann Street as you approach the stop sign going north for safety reasons. But again, I believe we need to put some on Carson Road. Thank you. Councillor Moore. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, I would concur that this is a good time for the no parking sign. I know that bylaw had brought it forward to council months ago, um, but it seemed out of place at the time because the parking situation hadn't been rectified. Now that we're adding five or six parking spots, it's probably a really good time to put no parking signs up on Carson Road. Um, and I'll just say that today I drove by and I know that we have put signs up it's going to take some time. People are still parking on Ann Street North as well as Carson Road, even though Township has put signs up. So it's going to take some time. People are going to have to get used to used to it. But I think that it's a prime opportunity to put the no parking signs up on Carson Road when we do this work. Uh, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. And just a question on Carson Road. Would we do both sides or were, are you thinking just one side of, or, or both sides of Carson Road? General Manager, if we did that, uh, what would be the most um, practical? If it is through you, Mayor Allen, to Council March Hapman, if it is Council's desire to have no parking on that area, I would suggest both sides. Okay. Because if one side is left open, they will park. Councillor Cabral? Thank you. Um, I guess my, my, my question and comment is looking down the road uh, with respect to that particular location. I mean, putting in more parking and uh, basically you're just encouraging more people to come there. Uh, and it is actually a road allowance. But with all the building that's going on up there, with all of the new residential houses and all, all, all of that uh, going into place there. And I mean, it's, it's really starting to grow. Um, I'm just wondering, and I guess uh, I probably would like to direct this to um, Fire Chief Kirk, only because I know when uh, the development for Ant Mills came up, there was some questions about the, the uh, uh, road uh, entering the subdivision and which way it would come in. Um, and it had a lot to do with the ability of our emergency services to respond when seconds count. So I'm just wondering if, if uh, there's going to be a time and whether or not uh, it would uh, help uh, that emergency services response um, if um, uh, Ann Street was, was actually opened up because I can also see it uh, helping to uh, help in developing the area of Ann Street uh, north, actually north of uh, of Snow Valley as well, because it goes all the way through to uh, 26. But I, I really would like to hear from um, Chief Kirk uh, on the uh, response, uh, if that were to be opened up as it, it is a road allowance and actually put in place. Chief Kirk. Thank you, Mayor Allen, and through you to uh, Councillor Cabral, it would definitely uh, enhance our response times. And I do believe in our master plan from 2015, there was uh, remarks made in, in regards to opening up Ann Street for that a response capability. So um, it, it would only be a positive step. Thank you, uh, Chief Kirk. I would kind of like to think that that would be something that that uh, would, would be moving forward in the future because, you know, we've already got hundreds and hundreds of homes that are uh, proposed there and hundreds and hundreds that are already been sold and more to come. So um, uh, I think maybe uh, encouraging people to go there might not be the steps that we want to continue to take moving forward. So I just uh, kind of wanted to put that out there that maybe we should start looking at possibly opening up that road allowance and uh, making it available in particular for when the fire hall is opened. Councillor Hannah. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I agree with uh, <clears throat> Councilman Corbell and, and Fire Chief Kirk. Uh, back in, I think it was probably of our first term, this came up before and we were offering the uh, developers an opportunity to uh, pay for the cost of putting that road through, but it didn't come to fruition, obviously. Uh, so I would uh, support that, but it would it be possible to get an answer from our planner with that is something that it would be considered in the future. Director Spagdall. Thank you, Mayor. Through to Councilor Hanna. From my recollection, I'd have to go back and, and take a look at the EA process. Um, it was my understanding that the EA specifically looked at possible connection um, to Snow Valley Road and Carson Road via the Yancey Road Allowance. There were a few considerations that came into play when that discussion occurred. One of them was the um, the use of the road allowance as uh, as a connection, a trail connection that is heavily used and trying to keep that in its natural state. Other considerations were related to the cost of running and, pl and placing a road through the road allowance due to the steep slopes that are, 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 are within the area. So the idea was that with the mixed subdivision, street A, could be utilized as a connection through that subdivision and through the next phase to provide that road connection, that north-south road connection to Snow Valley and Carson. Um, again, this is from recollection. What I would suggest is, is that we take a closer look at what was considered as part of the EA and the recommendations that form part of that, uh, that process. So that uh, so the staff can provide some more accurate information. As I said, that's from my recollection of, of what was discussed when the match came up. Okay, Director Spagnon, you've got quite an echo there. It's uh, hard to hear you, so I'm not sure what's causing that. But uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. I'm just curious um, if it would be to the will of council to separate these two issues. I think that there's further or more information required on both of them if we're going to move forward uh, with more of a wholesome plan on each of the, the two issues. Um, I think that for Orr Lake separately, um, if, if it's the intent of council to direct visitors and residents to the Orr Lake Park, um, having it to be more accessible, potentially a dock or temporary washrooms available um, could drive people there and keep them off our residential streets. Um, and similarly to the um, Midhurst, if we were to look towards a long-term solution, um, just not simply no parking signs. So I don't know if we wanna separate them and continue with direction to staff in that way. Uh, well, if you wanted to make uh, an amendment, uh, then you could certainly go ahead and do that. Um, I'll let you contemplate that while we go back to Councillor Ritchie, please. Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, I, I think we need to work with what's before us and what the report that's been brought before us tonight, whether we're dealing with Ann Street, Carson Road, or whether we're dealing with, with Orr Lake Park, we have a problem with parking. And uh, there's nothing stopping us from moving forward with one of the recommendations tonight, I've pointed out option three. If we go with option three, at least we can move the gate, move that fence forward, and provide some parking on the land that we own and plus let staff move forward with acquiring that strip of land. And at least we're identifying uh, the parking problem. And we can do the same on Carson Road as well too, provide the parking and in the meantime, um, bring back a report uh, and, and uh, what other ways we can go uh, regarding uh, and the, the unopened road allowance of Ann Street. And at least we will have addressed the parking that's before us now. The warm weather is here. We need to move forward, especially with South Door Lake Park. And uh, again, uh, uh, the, the people are coming up, are soon going to be coming up. School's soon going to be out. And, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, we, we need to move on this, what, it, what is before us tonight. And I think all this other stuff can, can come in later on. Thank you. Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through you uh, to Council. I did want to advise just uh, with one item regarding option three based on timelines. Um, so in the event that 
um, the title cannot be found, um, you know, somebody in the estate of, somebody responsible for the estate. Uh, it could be quite a lengthy process to, uh, to have the lands transferred to the municipality. It turns into a court process and with the courts backed up, we're unsure what the timelines of that specific uh, part of the process would be, unfortunately. Councillor Ritchie. Well, Mary Allen, like, like I said, like I think in the report there where I read where we can move forward, provide some parking, about 20,000 for new parking, and then let staff work on obtaining uh, that strip of land. And once it's obtained, then we could we could put parking in there as well too. So uh, the, the the criticalness of here is to is get some parking, and and that would that would provide it. So I appreciate the comments from the clerk. But either end, this this is why we've brought this forward to address the parking problem, and it's here before us tonight. And let's let hopefully we can do something with that. Thank you. So uh, when you say the twenty thousand, so you're moving from option three to option two then, because we don't know whether we can get that extra piece of land. I I, I would like option three and, and move forward. At least if we vote on option three, the money's there to to buy it and. Uh, uh, if if not, then well, you know what? They can come back to council. Count, staff can always come back to council and say, you know, we couldn't get it, uh, so you know, we'll give the money back or whatever the case may be, or bring back a report. But uh, at least move forward with uh, trying to do it and getting some new parking. So I, I still, I'd still like to stick with option three. Councillor Moore. Oh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Just for clarification. Um, because we're talking about two different situations, how do we vote on, if we vote option three for Orr Lake, how do we vote then for the Carson Road and Street unopened road allowance, which has no financial implications at all? I just, I'm not clear on how we're separating these two. So maybe the clerk um, can That's a good out. point. It's a point I actually asked uh, when we were reviewing the agenda. So uh, I'll go to Clerk Ainsworth on that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through you to Council. Uh, so the, the motion you see before you, it strictly deals with Orlake. Um, the Carson and Ann Street parking, uh, the general manager has proposed a plan in the report on how to, um, to deal with that portion of the parking issue. So it, should Council want to see something different for Carson and Ann, they would have to propose a motion um, to, to do such this evening but this motion specifically just deals with or lake parking. So after we vote option one, two or three, this is all encompassing. I don't need to, to vote for Ann Street and Carson Road. Okay. Right. Yes, Clerk Ainsworth is shaking her head affirmatively. Um, okay, well then, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mary Allen. I just also need some clarification about option three. Because those parking spots are on that strip that we could acquire, correct? So if, yes. if it's, as Clark Ainsworth said, it might take a year. We're waiting in a year before we can do anything about the parking. Am I, am I thinking correctly? Well, Councillor Ritchie, as I understood, was wants to see something happen. Uh, so he was uh, suggesting I believe option two to get something happening and, and then work towards finding out really uh, how much uh, it would cost and what the process and timing would be uh, to acquire the land to be able to, uh, to move to the greater amount of parking shown in figure four in the report. Councillor Ritchie. Mayor Allen, just to keep it simple, I, I just, I, you know, I, I just assume uh, go to option three, uh, then it's if, if we can get an acceptance on that, it gives direction to staff to move forward with trying to obtain title to that strip, plus provide some parking on the original and 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 deal with the problem. If there's any problems, they can come back to council uh, if we're still here and and deal with uh, whatever issues that came up. Uh, but at least it gives them the direction to move forward with the whole thing. 
Uh, option three would be capped at the 50,000. And if it was greater, they'd have to come back to council. Sure, that's fine. Okay, further comment on that? Okay, so Councillor Ritchie, you're moving option three as a seconder for option three. Uh, Councillor Cabral. Um, Clerk Ainsworth, could we uh, make it um, definitive that there's a cap at 50,000 and if the costs are greater, we have to come back to council to further discuss this? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. I can simply add in the words uh, with an upset limit of $50,000. Uh, and just for clarification, so for the motion, if option three is being proposed, uh, it would simply be option two that would be removed as option three also includes option one. So we, uh, it would be best to keep the wording of option one as, in the motion as well. Okay. Is that all right with the mover and seconder then? Mayor Allen? Yes. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Mahesh is uh, listening in and to make sure the signage that we get signage up on all the areas to direct the traffic to the park. Very, very important uh, for, for that signage to get up. So if, if we need to add that, let's add it. If not, then I, I think Mahesh knows anyways, but uh, let's move forward with the vote. Option two. Okay. Okay, uh, can you read then how, what the motion would be, assuming option three with the upset, please, uh, Clerk Ainsworth? Uh, the motion would read that the report from the general manager, infrastructure and operational services regarding the update on parking at Orr Lake and the Carson Road and Street unopened road allowance dated June 15th, 2022 be received and that council provide direction with the options outlined within this report Option one, that council directs staff to retain the existing parking spaces around Orr Lake and to sign the lower portion of Marshall Road, the last 125 feet as no parking. And option three, that council directs staff to implement option one and the South Orr Lake Park alternative two, as described herein with funding of an upset limit of $50,000 from the tax rate stabilization reserve. Okay, all those in favor? That is carried, thank you. All right, we're moving on to the other action reports at 10.1 in the agenda. We have, uh, can I have a mover and seconder to get these on the floor, please? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ma Chapman. We have 10.2 through 10.5. Uh, questions or desire to pull any of these? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so that the recommendations contained herein be approved. Oh, Councillor Cabral. Yeah, so, sorry, Mary Allen. I, I just have one question with respect to uh, 10.5. Go ahead. Um, in that report, it states that there may be uh, options for 2023 and 2024. Um, and I'm just curious, part one of my question is whether or not the, um, the um, uh, engineering firm that's uh, looking after that is this payment to them include the options for those two years or is it strictly the payment for year one? And of course, if we get option for year two and three, then would it be retendered or they would be included in that? That's one question. The second question was in respect of uh, the capital budget and the amounts that were set aside and approved for this, did that amount also include the, uh, the engineering management fees? Okay, I'll start with general manager and then we might uh, also be getting uh, Director Radigan as well. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Through you to Councillor Cabral. Um, the fees in this particular award covers year one, um, does not cover year two or year three options. For us to proceed to year two or year three options, it would be uh, pending Council's approval of the 2023 that would be year two, and 2024, which would be year four budgets. Uh, that's the first part. The second part of it is that in this proposal that we've got before us from the, the consultant, their fees are set as a percentage of the construction cost. So we've got a competitive tender, a competitive uh, proposal before us 
that already sets what that upset limit would be for the, the option years, depending or as a function of the construction costs. So that's the first part of it. Um, the, in addition to that, my intention is the only time I would come forward to council asking for um, approval of the option years would be based upon satisfactory performance by the engineering firm. We have to be confident that they can deliver the work. Um, so that's the only time. So that's the first part. The second part, in terms of the engineering fees as part of the estimate. Yes, we did consider the engineering fees as part of the overall uh, estimate that we've got in there. Um, when I did look at the, the, the cost of that we've budgeted, it was my opinion that we could cover the engineering and the construction cost uh, within that budgeted amount that we've got approved. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so we have a mover and seconder that action report at, oh, Councillor Hanna. Uh, uh, thank you, sorry, I was busy trying to cough. Um, follow up to Councillor Cabell's question. The engineer, I would just like to know exactly what the engineer's role is. And if we're paying out $404,000 this year for the engineer to do that, would it be something that future budget might consider hiring somebody that would be capable of doing whatever the engineer does? I wasn't sure from the report exactly what the engineer does. So if somebody can share that with me, I'd appreciate it. General manager. Uh, yes, Mayor Allen, through you to Councillor Hannah. Uh, the engineer will be doing all of the design from going out, assessing the road, surveying the road, determining what needs to be done, uh, doing the engineering surveys, doing the, the geotechnical below ground, um, analysis of what's there, all of that will be done, plus the designs, the drawings, um, supporting us in the tender work. And then once we get to construction, also providing staff to oversee the contractors. Um, that's what they'll be doing. That 400,000 also includes a 100,000 allowance for items that are not easily priced at this stage, such as the on the ground analysis that they might need to do, uh, which we only be would become clearer once we start uh, drilling holes and running into stuff, so to speak. Um, but that's a number in there. So it is 300,000 plus 100,000 of that um, allowance for those hard to define scope of works. Let's put it that way. Follow on. Uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the answer, sir. Um, would it be possible to have an, an in-house person do these sort of things in the future? General Manager. Through you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Hanna. Um, it is possible, and I would say in-house persons. Um, the volume of work um, would definitely entail more than one person. And it's an analysis that we could do, and we could uh, present it as part of the 2023 budget analysis. But if we were to go to a consistent three to $4 million a year capital works. What an internal unit or could comprise of to execute that work and what might be the cost of that, both in terms of salaries uh, and software that we might need. Uh, thank you, it's just that my observation is we're spending, as I said, 404 and, and, it, and thank you for correcting it, it's 300,000, but at the end of that, term we've spent $300,000 and we still have nothing uh, left to show for the efforts that were done other than the work that gets completed. So thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so let me go back up here. Uh, sorry. Aggregate assumption. One second here. Okay, that the action reports 10.2 through 10.5 be received and the recommendations contained therein be improved as presented. 10.2 advisory committee review, 10.3 2022-17-PW aggregate production and hauling tender award. 10.4 final assumption and partial release of securities re Sycamore circle. 10.5 award of program management roads, water mains and sewer projects of the 2022 state of good repairs projects with options for 2023 and 2024, that being 2022-20-PW. 
All those in favor? That is carried. Moving on to information reports, which is item 11.1 .1 in the agenda. On the agenda, can I have a mover and seconder for the information reports? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ritchie, there are six of them. Uh, any questions with respect to those, Councillor Ritchie? Yes, uh, Mayor Allen, I'd like you to pull uh, uh, item five update on the ditching within the township of Springwater. Okay, we don't pull it. Uh, just go ahead and ask, uh, make comment, ask questions, please. Well, I, I just, Mayor Allen, I'd like to make uh, Mahesh can speak to that. Do you do you have a specific question with respect to the report? Um, yes, I'd like to know when they can start. Okay, uh, General Manager Ramdale, I think they have started, but uh, through you, Mayor ahead. Allen, to Councillor Ritchie. Uh, yes, Mayor Allen, you are correct. We have uh, started. We started uh, back in May um, with ditching and with. Uh, related adjacent road works in, in many areas. Um, I do recall us uh, working on FLOS 4. Um, I believe it was FLOS 4. I might be incorrect, but I believe it was. Um, but yes, we have started on the ditching. And we will continue to do so um, going forward. Our, our plan policy is ditching runs from May to October of every given year. The um, maps that were in the report, Appendix A and B, were good. Um, it, uh, it showed uh, what's been done and, um, and what's, what's still remaining. Is that uh, maybe distinguished between A and B in, in the report, please, General Manager? You're muted there. Sorry. Yep, technical difficulties in unmuting myself. Um, the what I have there is the 2021, what we did in 2021. And in 2022, I've listed both um, roadside ditches and municipal drains uh, to the full extent of work that we are um, working on there. Um, and our policy is we start from one end of the, the municipality and we just work our way through um, to the end. What we've listed there as well is the plan as of today. Our and it's, for example, roadside ditches. It's approximately 7,000 uh, linear meters. We plan to get up to 10,000 linear meters by the end of the year. Um, at this point in time, we have not identified the final 3,000 as most of it is generally complaint driven. Um, so as those come in, we, we add them to the list. Follow on, Councillor Ritchie. Carol, I just, I just want to point out to uh, and thank Mahesh and staff for this report. This is a very important report. We are a rural area, and I can think of different areas that needs to be ditching, and they've identified that, uh, again, whether it be rural or urban, um, and uh, and going forward and from conversations that I've had with Mahesh that we build some kind of a rolling capital plan that, okay, every year uh, that, you know, with the new council, they could say, okay, well, this year uh, there's going to be uh, this, this, and this uh, in, in areas of the township that's going to be, uh, uh, that's going to be ditched. Um, and, uh, and again, pointing out the uh, municipal drains, we got 20 some municipal drains in, in our municipality. And I see the McElwain Robertson branch, uh, I believe it's going to tender. Uh, this is very, very important. I can't, I can't stress how important this is. So to, to show this, and we can show this to the public, it's very important that uh, we're listening to their concerns and uh, we're doing our job. Thank you. Thank you. Before going to Councillor Cabral, I just, if we do 10,000 meters and there are 766,560 meters of roadside ditches, we're doing 1.3% each year. So it's gonna take us 90 years to get all 766,000 done. Um, of the 766,000 meters, how much 
are going to require ditching, general manager? Very good question, Mayor Allen. Um, that is um, going back to what Councillor Ritchie said about um, looking at what is it we should be doing as a municipality from a best practice perspective and putting that forward, putting it in front of council as part of the, the budget process. Uh, and, and essentially to say, this is our plan to raise that number and to get into an area where we think is reasonable. Um, and then for us to have that conversation about the funding of it. But yes, that's, that's our plan for 2023 budget and manager Hall and myself have already started that conversation. Um, and we've gone quite a ways down that road already um, in evaluating that. Councilor Cabral. Mayor Allen, I, I see uh, Councilor Ritchie still had his card up, so maybe he, he, he'd like a follow on first. I don't mind. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I just wanted to comment. Um, like I'm looking at it on my other computer screen. Uh, the Swaley, Swaley drain, 2300 meters. Mayor Allen, uh, it took us four years to do two weeks of work. You know better than anybody because you were. You were at the table with the MBCA for four years, two weeks of work, but that's 2,300 meters that could be added and done somewhere else within the municipality. That was very, very, that was a big job to get it done. And, uh, and going forward, that's something else we'll need to monitor uh, well, for their councils. But you take 2,300 meters and you add that, if you take uh, Swaley drain, Giffen drain, some of them drains that are done, and add those those numbers out over other years. You, you can you can cover. You, you're going to be able to do a lot of ditching there. So I am confident uh, with what uh, they've provided us here. But this is a good roadmap as to what we're doing and and show this to the public. So I I compliment Mahesh and the staff for doing it. And and again, like uh, this did very very important that uh, get the water flowing so the farmers can get out get their, their crops in the ground. Uh, I know I'm a farmer myself. I got out that's running and uh, that's important. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cabral. There we go. Thank you, Marilyn. I don't know if this can, can be uh, answered. Um, it's just uh, with respect to the bylaw um, report, uh, I noticed there for signs and I know they're, they're being proactive um, but uh, it's 109 up from this time last year. I think they were at uh, seven. Um, so for the month, and I'm just wondering whether or not if uh, someone from the um, bylaw department is available, whether some of that had to do with uh, the provincial election and election signs that maybe people were complaining about. I see uh, Clerk Aiken, I'm sorry, Clerk Ainsworth <laughs> might have an answer. Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through you. So um, usually with provincial election signs, unless they're causing a hazard to sightline triangles um, or a safety hazard to pedestrians or vehicles, um, they're, they're not touched. Um, so that would be, if there are any, it would be very little of that number that would be in relation to the provincial campaign. Thank you, answers the question, thanks. Okay, so we have uh, a mover and seconder that the report items listed are in be received as information by law services monthly activity report for May 2022, 2022 budget and business plan results as at May 31, 2022, zoning bylaw amendment said B 2022-008 regarding P. Drew 3251 Pine Grove Road, road naming Midhurst Heights, update on ditching within the Township of Springwater <coughs> and Municipal Water shut off. <clears throat> All those in favor? That is carried. <clears throat> Verbal reports. Um, official plan update and economic development, uh, Director Spagnol. Uh, Oh, oh, the internet is uh, hanging you up there. Nope. 
Everybody get that? Loud, loud and clear. Loud and clear. <laughs> it shut them off. Good report. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> um, we'll have to follow up on that. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to have to uh, follow up with Director Spagno if you have any questions with respect to this uh, item. Um, he's going to have to come into the township as well uh, to uh, <laughs> tune into better internet. Um, Midhurst Development Update, General Manager Ramdale. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, I must say you're, you're, you're sounding better than you have in previous meetings. So uh, whatever you got I, done, you can spread that to Director Spagnol. Yeah, well, I'm looking from... Go ahead. Go ahead, to Councillor Ritchie. Mayor Allen, before, Mayor Allen, please. I, I, I'd like to go back to the economic development updates just for a minute. Okay. Mayor Allen, we just got finished talking about the... Uh, the uh, report from uh, Mahesh about uh, ditching. And uh, that ditching is linked to economic development updates because uh, on our report uh, that we just looked at there regarding ditching, they're gonna be doing the Robertson McElwain and that's gonna be going out to tender. That's gonna get done. And as soon as it's done, there's farmers in that area that's ready to tile drain their land and they're spending money. And that, that goes to the local uh, industry, the local economy, the people that are tiling it. And uh, that's economic development. And, and uh, you know, it, we, it, it just goes right by us, but, and, and there's hundreds of thousands of dollars that are spent. I just want to mention that. So it all, it all ties in with what we do. And that's why, again, I'm, I'm a broken record, but how important this pitching and that is. So that's economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, General Manager Ramdeo, Midhurst Development Update, please. Thank you again, Mayor Allen. Um, for the Midhurst uh, update, the construction of the effluent main continues on uh, Highway 26 and Wilson Drive. Uh, earlier today, we had on Wilson Drive, we had a few um, sinkholes, washouts of the fluid that used to drill or to lubricate the the pipe as we drill actually came up through the roadway and undermined the roadway. So the roadway mm -hmm. is actually closed right now. Uh, the, the contractor and the consultants were on site up to about an hour, two hours ago, looking at ways to resolve that problem, to make the roadway safe and reopen it uh, again. We did start 24 hour work, overnight work on Wilson and um, Highway 26 on Monday. So they are there. They have resources available to work through to get this done if it can be resolved tonight. There is um, a student who lives in the area who requires busing. Um, and we have put along with uh, working with Simcoe District School Board. So we've put alternate um, arrangements in place for that student so that they can be picked up and taken to school and dropped off back. Um, and we'll be doing the same uh, similar exercise with garbage and recycling. From a communication perspective, um, there have been some social media uh, notices about it. And we've been trying to notify as many persons as we possibly could about it, in addition to working to resolve it as soon as possible. In terms of the overnight work, the overnight work will continue until June 30th. They are working on uh, the connection of some of the pipe work that they've installed. Um, and that requires a little wider road occupancy, so to speak, on Highway 26, which can only be done at night. Uh, so that's why there's the night work. So they are working on that. Most of the work is excavation, some concrete work, um, and some pipe connection work. They are working on that. Uh, as I said, the intention is to work until June 30th and thereafter return to daytime work. So that's on the, um, the effluent main. On the signals at Snow Valley and Wilson, the on-the-ground work is in. 
uh, we require Hydro One to come now to connect the power before we start the installation of the above ground work. Hydro One, the schedule is for them to come this week. They haven't pinned us down on a particular day, but the promise was this week. Um, I can tell you that as of right now, they have not, they're still not on site. So we're still hopeful that they'll show up either tomorrow or the day after, get that connection done. And then thereafter, we've got about two weeks to put the, the poles up and the lights up and to, to commission it. Um, so that's the hope on the, the, the signals. In terms of building permits, uh, we've got 244 applications in and we've issued 113 permits as of today. Um, so those, that's 113 homes, the construction proceeding. Over on the west side of Bayfield, um, in terms of the development, nothing much. We're still proceeding through on the design aspect of it, um, the servicing design work. But on Craig Road, we've actually commenced work from a design aspect on Craig Road. And you might see drones up in the air uh, doing some aerial survey of the, the land area. So the plan is to do aerial survey, which will give us elevation, size of land, uh, and likewise. And then once that is complete, then we'll start an on the ground, a ground survey uh, to pick up more accurate elevations. So work has commenced on that particular one. And that brings me to the end of the update for this evening. General Manager, you had said the west side of Bayfield. I think you were referring to the east side of Bayfield in the latter part of the report. And you, you, you mentioned about uh, the drone. I don't know whether uh, um, between you and CAO, whether there has been communication about the, uh, the um, drone and how effective it is in this exercise you just described, but also one on the Swaley drain. Uh, so you might just uh, uh, spend a moment talking about that for council's benefit. Of course. Um, yes, Mayor. I see Councillor Hanna had has got his card up. Councillor Hanna, did you have a separate question or can you respond to that? No, a separate question. Thank you. I just wanted to ask the director of Snow or Wilson Drive is open from Snow Valley South tomorrow morning. General Manager. Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Hanna. Yes, it should be open from Snow Valley South uh, towards Barry. So back to the drone. So you're you're using the drone for different applications. Uh, yes, Mayor Allen. The drone that will be over Craig Road is actually from the consultant, but it's a similar drone. Um, what it does, it takes the photographs and it has the ability to pick up elevations and take measurements. Um, so it's a very high resolution drone um, that would be used on Craig Road. The township did purchase a drone and that drone is in our possession. And we actually used that drone earlier this week to survey the Willow Creek area. Um, and what it does, it gives us high resolution um, footage of what's happening along our municipal drains. It also has the capability of taking measurements um, along that municipal drain. We did not do that earlier this week, but it has that capability. So it can survey the area in terms of the width of the drain, and we can keep a record of that year after year as to how that might be changing um, in terms of the extent of vegetation and likewise. That's excellent. It is of. Yeah. Okay, any uh, further questions before we move on to uh, county updates? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. No, there's no update at this time. Okay, municipal updates. Anyone have uh, municipal update? Councillor Ritchie? Well, I'd like just like to speak on June 5th. Um, myself and my brother, we went up to the uh, uh, the fire hall in Elmville to the firefighters pancake breakfast. And uh, it was a beautiful Sunday morning. The place was packed. And uh, anyways, the firefighter, we had a great breakfast and everybody was just so happy to to have winter behind us and the COVID behind us and have a great meal. And uh, it was just, just a great event all the way around. And uh, I, was, I was glad I could make it. So I just wanted to comment on that. And to the firefighters as well too. Uh, it, was, it was a great event, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ma Chapman. 
Thank you, my Alan. I just wanted to comment on the golf tournament on Monday, how fabulous the staff um, uh, did the uh, ran the golf tournament. It was absolutely fabulous. The day was beautiful. I want to thank them, council, um, staff, and our sponsors and all the golfers for that day. It was so much fun. Thank you. I was going to swing on to uh, Manager Dean just to have a, a, a brief wrap up. I know she will be doing a report, but uh, yeah, I think we uh, we all agree it was fantastic job done by staff and uh, it was an excellent event and day. Manager Dean. Thank you, Mayor Allen and the rest of council. Um, yes, it was a great day. We had the weather behind us, which was wonderful based on the day before and some of the weather we received today. So we did have um, 121 golfers attend, plus an additional uh, 11 guests for dinner. Um, so that basically was a full shotgun with all holes having double groups on them, except for the par threes, um, which is ideal at the golf courses. So uh, we did have... Um, um, we did have many sponsors that had teams and participants playing in them as well. And um, the preliminary numbers are we we do believe that we have about forty thousand um, dollars in sponsorships that will go into the um, different worthwhile causes, so the community assistance program um, and the other uh, physician recruitment and other local initiatives. So we will be uh, I will be bringing forward the final financial report. We are just confirming. Um, all invoices and uh, confirming all details. And I will be bringing that report forward, um, hopefully at the next meeting, but for sure by the August meeting. Thank you. Absolutely tremendous job. Okay, any other municipal updates, Councillor Cabral? Just a reminder, Mayor Allen, that the uh, Spring Water Farmers Market in Elmvale uh, kicks off this Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. I just checked the weather. It might be spotty, but uh, it's not looking like a, a completely bad day. So hopefully there'll be some uh, folks up to take advantage of it. Thank you. Just on, just on that, did we were we able to get students to help with the setup and take down? Uh, is that Manager Dean or C. L. Schmidt? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, two members of council. It's my understanding that uh, we are still. Uh, seeking assistance from students and, and other volunteers. Uh, so uh, staff will be uh, ensuring that uh, the farmer's market does uh, uh, go off uh, this week. And we have also been informed that our, our marketing manager is also uh, uh, dealing with some personal matters, if you will. And so we are looking after this uh, in the interim and we are still seeking assistance from, uh, from the community to try to assist us in the, in the setup on a go forward basis. So if you have individuals that are looking for some some uh, some hours, community hours, or looking for a, a few uh, a few bucks a week, if you will, uh, by all means, uh, send them our, our, send them send them our way, and we'll make sure that uh, we we put them to work. So, thank you. Any other municipal updates? All right. Uh, any notices of motion or items for future consideration? Then we move on to 15.1, approval of the bylaws. Can I have a mover and seconder for the approval of the bylaws? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ma Chapman, that the bylaws listed herein be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk, 5000-354, ZB2022-006, Schultz, 5000-355, LH2022-001, Re Archer, and 2000 and 22-046, confirm assumption of Sycamore Circle. All those in favor? That is carried. Confirmatory bylaw mover and seconder, please. Councillor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, that the bylaw 2022-047 to confirm and adopt the proceedings of council at the regular meeting held on June 15, 2022, listed herein, be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk. All those in favor? That is carried and adjournment mover and seconder, please. Councillor Ritchie, Councillor Ma Chapman, that the regular meeting of the Township of Springwater does now adjourn at 8.45 p.m. to meet again the regular meeting on July 6, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you and good night.
Good night. Thank you. Hockey night in Canada. Mm -hmm.